in this video, I'll show you how I use very different types of Insta360 cameras and how to get the best out of them technically and creatively. Despite their name, Insta360 make more than just 360 cameras. The Ace Pro is their latest action camera and is a big step up from their previous ones with several unique features. The Go 3 is their latest somewhat quirky and tiny wearable camera that doubles as an action camera. Because um, normally it's limousines, right? I don't get buses much. Next train is 11.28. What's the time? Oh, that's now. This video has lots of footage from different situations using all three cameras, including a day trip to London with the lovely Sarah Seal. Cheers. Last, last bad luck. Not the coffee, it's alone. not bad luck. It's bad luck with water. Yeah, but this is water. There's water inside. I've everything, got water in a tea bag. Everything <laughs> has water inside. <laughs> everything, not, including alcohol. I'm not doing it. No, leave me alone. Freak. Bad luck. I'm not going to be covering everything about these three cameras as that would make this video longer than a Martin Scorsese movie, but I will cover the important stuff. Inter 360 cameras all feature their superb electronic stabilization called oh, Flow State, the and they all use okay, the terrific phone app and studio desktop software for post processing and manipulation. They've made huge strides in making them work without needing either app if you need faster workflow, but for me, it's still the way to go to get the best results from them. Their 360 cameras are easily their most creative ones and my review of the Superb X3 in September 2022 is one of my favourite videos on my channel. I really recommend checking that out as I show you how I use it for filmmaking rather than the usual stuff that you see, you know, people jumping or sliding down mountains for some reason. Using the X3 for traditional filmmaking is so creatively stimulating because you can get shots that are either impossible or ridiculously complicated using any other camera. It makes you think in a very different way. The Ace Pro is the most familiar form factor with its action camera body, fixed 16mm equivalent wide angle lens, and 4K recording up to a surprisingly good looking 120 frames per second. It has some unique features such as an 8K 24p mode and a tilting flip up screen, which is great for awkward angles and filming yourself. It also has the best low light performance of any action camera that I've used. If you use these cameras to vlog, there's a fixed minimum focus distance for them all. The X3 and Go 3 are 60 centimeters. With the X Pro minimum focus, the status being just 40 centimeters, but I've not found that to be the case. Found it to be a fair bit further than that. This is it at 60, and this is it at 80. So, really, a diopter if you're going to film yourself. This is the plus two, which I think is kind of the sweet spot for filming yourself or vlogging. So it's about here. Doesn't distort the image too much behind. Plus four is a little bit too much for filming yourself. You have to be really quite close to get yourself in focus. Comfortable positions out here, but you're not quite in focus to your eyes. So it's about here. I think plus two is kind of the sweet spot. It just depends what you want to shoot. For other things though, plus four and even plus 10 can look really good.
Joshio, make up now, 3D printers and essential purchase, very cheap. But I'd love to see Freewell make some proper dedicated diopters for the Ace Pro, like they've made for the NDs. The Go 3's big selling point as the camera is tiny. The world's smallest action camera. This lets you put it in all sorts of unique places. No, not there. Get your mind out of the gutter. Although it is waterproof. Let's go sit at the front. Come on. I have reviewed the first two and love the concept, but some things really need to be improved, mainly the image quality, battery life, and the heating. The image quality is better than the previous versions, but there's no 4K still. It tops out at 2.7K at 30p, but I rarely use that. Instead, I recommend using the ever so slightly lower resolution 1440p in free frame video mode, which gives you the most flexibility with the image in post. 1440p also lets you go up to 50p. Sorry. The Go 3 comes in black and white. This is the black one, as you probably know, because it's black. And I've really been using it mostly today just as a, a POV camera. I've got the little pendant under there, and it just puts over Sevi. There we go. And I can just trigger it from here. There we go. Or I can trigger it from the pod, where I can also monitor the shot. Thankfully, overheating is a thing of the past and the internal battery is a huge improvement. It still has internal storage only, sadly, so you're gonna have to choose which size to buy. Get the biggest capacity you can afford, basically. The microphone audio quality is decent and a lot better than the previous generations. All of those recorded in 16 kilohertz sample rate. All these, thankfully, recorded in 48 kilohertz. Plus, there's a big improvement in the actual quality of the microphone. There's options for stereo, direction focus, and wind reduction. Most of what I recorded with was set to the latter, as the mics are very sensitive to wind, but there is a quality drop when doing so. But there is a quality drop when doing so. There are wind muffs available for the X3, so that's a better solution, but there aren't any for the Go 3 or Ace Pro that I've seen. I wouldn't use the direction focus as it overprocesses the audio. I wouldn't use the direction focus as it overprocesses the audio. I wouldn't use the direction focus as it overprocesses the audio. You can connect external mics to the Ace Pro and X3 via USB-C, but not the Go 3, unfortunately. I generally shoot in the flat profile or HDR, which the X3 and Ace Pro have. It works really well on shots with very challenging dynamic range. The X3 can shoot up to 5.7K 30p, and this resolution is what I always have it set to. You can shoot up to 60p in 4K, but I rarely do this as you need as much resolution as possible for the entire 360 image that it captures. The whole point of these is that you reframe them by cropping into any part of it, which of course results in less and less resolution the more and more you crop in. It has two half-inch sensors, front and back. Each lens has a field of view of just over 180 degrees. The app stitches them together, and because the selfie stick is between the two lenses underneath it, it disappears. This is why it looks like the camera's floating. This is one of the best things about 360 cameras. With the up to three meter extended selfie stick, you can get fantastic shots, and even some pseudo drone ones. But with the standard stick, you can still get some great shots. Just remember, the further the camera is away from you, the more you will have to crop to see yourself clearly. With the phone app or Insta360 Studio computer software, you can use keyframes to move and zoom the image around or make hard cuts. To have this variety of shots is impossible with a traditional camera, and that's why I love using them. The cropped image is fine when watching on a phone and the computer, as long as you don't crop in too much. But if you want the best image, well, that's from the Ace Pro. It's so boring. I would have done it. It does shoot up to 8K 24p, but you are better off sticking to 4K and again using the free frame mode, unless you're shooting in low light or need to shoot slow motion past 60p. There's more detail in 8K, but the stabilization isn't anywhere near as good 
as you get in 4K. Also 24p for me is not enough as I shoot in 25p. If you really need 8K, then use Topaz Video Enhance AI to upscale it. I filmed the jellyfish at 4K 120p, and it looks great. This is how fast they are in real-time speed. But with Topaz, I not only upscaled the shot to 8K, but I used frame interpolation to make it 1,000 frames per second-ish. So something that was only a 10-second shot now runs for around six minutes. Yes, that's a bit much for normal use, but perfect for my 8K wallpaper TV channel, which features loads of long shots to play on your TV so it isn't just a black slab of glass on the wall, but a window into the world. For photos, the high-resolution mode works well. It has a quad bear sensor to switch between 12 megapixels and 48 megapixels, the same way it switches from 4K to 8K for video. 12 megapixels is better for low light, but the detail is better with 48 megapixels. The key to all of these cameras is the camera setting, and I strongly recommend setting the sharpness to the minimum, low. If you really want it to be sharper, then do it in post. I rarely add any as it looks more natural like this, artificial sharpening, either in camera or in post. Doesn't give you more detail, it just accentuates the edges of things, which is unnatural. Sharpness and detail are two very different things. If you want the best results with the Go 3 and Ace Pro, shoot in free frame mode. This is the most unprocessed recording mode of these two cameras. Although with the Ace Pro, there are a couple of very useful features that aren't available in free frame mode, but work in normal and pure video mode. The first is you can pause recording by pressing the pause button on the camera screen or in the app. The second is the biggest one and uses the quad bear sensor to give you a two times crop at the touch of an icon on the screen or app. This is not a digital zoom, but a one-to-one -one sampling of the sensor. It's still 4K. It's just splitting the pixels up to do this. And the quality is great. It's a shame free frame mode can't do either of these, but it has loads of advantages. The field of view can be changed. The image can be de-warped. And you can also choose the aspect ratio you want to export in. In normal video mode, you must decide all of these before pressing the record button. With the aspect ratio, there are some key differences between the Ace Pro and the Go 3. The Ace Pro has a 4x3 sensor with a resolution of 4032 by 3024 Now you can set the camera to shoot in 4x3 in normal video mode, unless you need to shoot in 100 or 120 frames per second in 4K. Oh yeah, you also can't shoot 4x3 in 8K, only 16x9 and 2.35 to 1. In free frame mode, you don't have to make that decision as it's constantly recording the whole sensor. There are numerous different aspect ratios and they're all just crops of that 4x3 recording. The only thing that does make a difference is if you want to shoot in vertical video in full 4K, then you will need to rotate the camera 90 degrees as the 9x16 export from a landscape recording will only be 3K. The Ace Pro can also show you frame markers for 16x9 and 9x16. The Go 3 is different as the recorded image is circular, which is then de warped to your desired amount in the app or the studio software. When you're exporting 16x9, you see more on the left and right, in 9x16, more at the top and bottom, and in 1x1, well, it's in the middle. This is only in free frame mode. Again, in normal mode, you need to choose which aspect ratio before you press record. Another reason why I always use free frame mode with the Go 3 is the stabilization and to have a horizon lock. You can't have this in any other video mode, so you have to make sure that you are level whilst recording, which is especially hard when wearing the camera as you generally aren't monitoring the image on the pod screen whilst doing this. The Ace Pro can have a 45 degree correction in normal video mode, but the only way to get full horizon lock 
is again in free frame mode. Unlike the Go 3, there is a cost to doing this in that it crops substantially. Also, if you are planning on using 360 stabilization, shoot in manual mode to ensure you have a high shutter speed. Otherwise, you will get some stabilization artifacts. There are also many situations when you want to turn off stabilization with all of the cameras. And here's some examples. Attaching the X3 to a camera like this can produce some great behind the scene shots with stabilization on, the horizon is kept level and you are moving around within the frame. But if you turn it off, you can get a fantastic perspective with the camera static in the frame. When mounted to a car, if part of the car is visible, then you really want it to not move about in the frame as it looks more natural because with stabilization turned on the car bounces and the horizon stays steady if no part of the car is in frame then absolutely turn it on low light filming was much harder to nail down to give you the most accurate information the ace pro is easily the best of the three for this as it has a much larger sensor if you film with it side by side with the go 3 with the same settings it actually looks much brighter but as you can see it's massively noisier i think the go 3 is just artificially boosting the exposure one thing that might be tempting when you use the ace pro is to turn on hdr as it looks much brighter unless the camera's static don't because you'll get some weird artifacts because it's laying down two exposures over each other and it can't do that well when there's noise from high ISOs. If you use stabilization in auto exposure ensure the low light mode is turned on. This stops the ISO going to the maximum and keeps the shutter speed high enough to avoid any of those stabilization artifacts. In manual mode do the equivalent. But you may find that when you get into that low light mode that it's just a little bit too dark so you know, find some light which is going to help you or go into pure video mode. When shooting in normal video mode there is by default more in-camera noise reduction than in free frame mode which has very little of that processing. The issue is when you run a free frame mode clip through the studio app the exports always have noise reduction applied whether you add stabilization or not. There doesn't seem to be a way to stop it in the but if you use Adobe Premiere with the Insta360 plugin, import the clip directly, no noise reduction is added. And you still have control of the type of stabilization and field of view options when clicking source settings. If you've got noisy video, noise reduction in your editing software always looks better, like I have here with neat video. Now I know Insta360 you want me to talk about the AI pure video mode here. Whilst it definitely has its uses in situations where you can't get the shot any other way because it's too dark for me the processing is much too heavy after all i've spoken so much about how to get the most natural looking image and this adds a huge amount of noise reduction and then over sharpens it as that noise reduction removes a lot of detail the processing is especially evident on faces you know, wrinkly old mug like mine the pure video noise reduction has taken away a lot of the detail the wrinkles and stuff which is you know good in some ways but it's not realistic and it's too strong. You just have to deal with the reality of what I actually look like. Sorry. But in free frame mode, you can clean it up with neat video and you can use Topaz as well and make it look a lot better. I'm in just the free frame mode now and so what we, we don't have this pure shot. We have more control over the image, hundreds of a second and ISO is at 1600. A bit bright for the screens behind, but fine for everything else. If I keep doing this, maybe I'll make you as dizzy as me. If you're going to use the pure video mode, just make sure there is light and you're being realistic. If you do that, then your results will be a lot better. What's your job? My job, I'm filming Richmond. Oh, good for you. Good, lucky you're here then. TV channel? Not TV channel, no. Okay. No, 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 just... Uh, Myself. No, okay. the movie will be a lot of people, will be hundreds of people, but no, it's just me. I'm just testing this camera out. Oh, it's really good one. Uh, yeah, it is very good. I, I'll tell them that you said it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. One of the best accessories for the Ace Pro is the GPS preview remote, so you can control and view what you're shooting. And this is especially handy if the camera's not within easy reach. Bit weird if it's in your hand. 
So which one should you buy? Well, hopefully I've explained the pros and cons of them. If you want to be super creative, have the most fun and get impossible shots, then the X3 is the one to go for. The downside is the lenses are very exposed and can get damaged if you aren't careful. So take out Insta360's insurance when you buy it. You can also get plastic lens guards, which I have used for most of these shots. They don't affect the image much, but you must really be careful and keep them spotless. The image quality isn't the best when you crop in on the 360 camera, but you can use Topaz Video AI to enhance it with some fantastic results. It's much better though than the previous models, thanks to its ability to turn down sharpness. If you want a camera that you can wear or put in places you wouldn't normally put them, no, not there, up to you though. Then the Go 3 could be the one for you. But if you want the best image quality and don't mind it being the most traditional camera of the three, the Ace Pro is the one to go for. The image is so much better, as is the low light performance. It's also the most robust body. The only downside is the lens cover is not removable. So if you scratch it, you've got to send it to Insta360 and they will replace it as many times as you need it to be replaced, if you were that clumsy, in the first year. You have to pay for the shipping though. You can clip filters over it, so it might make sense to get a simple PL one to put on it when it's, say, on a bike or car. But really, what makes all of these cameras worth considering is the ability to do so much in the app or studio software. It's this flexibility in post that makes Insta360 cameras so unique.